Hello everyone! Welcome or welcome back to my channel! If you are new here, hi! My name is Felice, and this is my dad, Paul. He is a craft beer connoisseur and has been for quite some time now, and although he hasn't worked directly within the industry, he does have quite a bit of experience and expertise within the field. So I wanted to bring him on today to try some cheese, try some beer, and pick his brain a little bit, get a little more insight into the beer world, and overall compare the opinions of each beer from both sides, the amateur and the expert. I hope you enjoy! Do you want to describe the beers since you're a little more so, expert on that? I can, certainly. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple of beers here. I chose two beers from River North Brewery, which are um, located in the Rhino District of Denver. They kind of specialize in Belgian style beers. So we have a Saison and then we have a Quadruple. So we'll, we'll go with the Saison first and then we'll go with, with the Quad. Quads are one of my favorite styles, but I do love Saisons. But I haven't tried either one of these beers yet, so. I'm excited to try. Sweet! The cheeses that we have, um, this one is a Ski Queen. I'm not exactly sure what type of cheese it is, but it is a Norwegian cheese and it's kind of got like a creamy caramel taste to it, so it's a little sweeter. And then this one is a Robusto, which is a mix of Parmesan and Gouda. They're a little more on the sweeter end, but we've got one more sweeter and one kind of mix between sweet and savory. So. I'm excited to try those as well. Well, what beer right. do you want to start with? Today? Let's start with um, let's start with the Raspberry Cabernet Barrel J. Marie. J. Marie is their base um, saison, and then they kind of do different stuff with it. Sometimes they barrel age it, sometimes it's not. This one happens to be barrel aged um, in a Cabernet Sauvignon barrel. Cool. Their J. Marie is pretty high in alcohol for a saison. This one's coming in at 9.9 percent. Oh wow! Saisons usually range from even you know, like 4% up to like 8%, but this, this one's a pretty big one. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty big high one. up there. Saison is French for season. They used to brew these in the summertime, so it's kind of a summertime beer. They're also known as like a farmhouse ale. The farm owners would actually brew this beer for the people working on the farm. Oh. And during, during that's actually really cool. And, while they're working on the farms. Yeah, that's why typically they're usually a little lower on ABV, but you just want to enjoy it. We, they experiment and do higher ABVs. And based on the fact that it says it's raspberry, I'm assuming it's going to have raspberry flavors in it. I'm assuming they did, so it would probably be a little more pink in color. So kind of a little more, not sweeter, but not as rich. It's not going to be very rich, more fruity, and yeah. a little more sour. Yes, some saisons could be sour, some are not. Some are what they call clean. Like a clean saison, which doesn't have any wild yeast or bacteria. They also do use like wild top fermenting yeast and bacteria, and that's what gets it the sour. So we like to smell it first. Mm -hmm. Our taste is is aroma. So what are you getting? You know. Oh, when I smelled it, sorry, I already tried it, but when I smelled it, I definitely got like I said, lighter, more like fruity mm -hmm. scents in it. Mm -hmm. It's very fruity. Definitely getting a lot of raspberry in there. Mm -hmm. Just kind of jammy. When you taste it, you can get a lot of raspberry. Like it definitely tastes very raspberry. It's actually kind of nice. This is like something that I feel like I would drink in like an apple orchard. Or a farm. Or a farm, yeah. Right? Mm. Are you getting? That's good. I'm getting some of the Cabernet tea in there too. So you get the raspberry, mm -hmm. then right underneath that raspberry, what are you, what are you getting? Hmm. That aftertaste is almost whiny. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can I see that. I was gonna say barrel. like apple cider vinegary, but like not as like pungent. I think that's why I got the like apple orchard because it was like apple cider vinegary. I see. This was bottled in 2020, so we're sitting on it for two years in the bottle. And they've had a little time to warm up too. Yeah, and oftentimes, I mean, they did serve these warm. I mean, back in the day, refrigeration wasn't really a thing. Yeah. So these beers are actually meant to drink at room temperature. When we started these out, I refrigerate these at about 50 degrees. Um, they usually say about 50 to 55 is a good temperature to start with. But um, I think even if you let it sit for a while, it's kind of a sipping beer. Let it warm up to room temperature and it kind of, uh, kind of changes the, the flavors. Yeah, so we could definitely like come back to this. We could come back to it. And kind of see... Yeah. Difference. I'm gonna try now. Let's cheese. try a cheese. What like, do you think would go best first? I kind of feel like the Parmesan. Uh, I think so too. Maybe mm, that's a good cheese. I don't think I've tried this cheese yet. 
I don't know. I, I like cheese. <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> it was a color. It was part of the. Um, it was part of taste. Yeah, that is a really good cheese. Yeah. Kind of salty. It is salty. I think that's why it's probably best with the beer too, because it kind of like combats it, the fruity with the salty. I might have to get some more of that. <laughs> <laughs> I might try this caramel. Yeah, this get is. You. Oh, get cool. You. Thank you. Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite cheeses. It's definitely like a richer cheese, kind of. Now this might actually go with you. Let's. With guac. With that one. That cheese almost like melts in your mouth. That's kind of what it feels like mm -hmm. to me. It really like honestly does feel like caramel. It really tastes like caramel too. Like you can hardly really tell it's cheese, but it's really good. When I think about it, I almost kind of feel like that makes it like a caramel apple type thing. Oh yeah. Now this one, this Saison in particular, the Jay Marie is, uh, is more of, from what I understand, is a clean Saison. So it doesn't have that well bacteria. So it's not going to be a sour. Sour saison or sour beer. I mean, you're getting the sour, I think, from the raspberries, not necessarily though. More like the, the base beer. Yeah, I can definitely see that from like the sours that I've tried in the past. It doesn't have that like bite yeah. in the back of your mouth like a lot of sours do. It is kind of just more like fresh and airy and kind of sweet. So, what do you think about an old beer being two years old? Usually, when you think of beer, it's like, oh, drink fresh, drink fresh. But... Yeah. Well, because some of them, like the. Um, the ones we got in Florida, like the those birds flavored fresh. one, yeah, and the banana one, those have like milk in it, so you know, you kind of want to drink those more fresh. But I don't know, I mean, kind of like wine, I almost feel like that stuff is better aged. I kind of like the wood notes too, of like something that's aged. Speaking of like which, if you don't mind me stepping away for a second, no, I'm since good. we're on the River North thing. I do have a rum barrel quandary from River North. This one is now hitting 10 years old. It's wow. 2013. So this is actually the, the beer that turned me on to River North. Love their quads. So I'm really, really excited to try this one. That's cool. So anyway. What would you say is like your oldest beer that you This had? is probably my oldest beer. Really? I tried a beer. Now this was a few years ago. It was um, a early 2000s. I want to say 2004 or something. But wow. Yeah. Sometimes they go bad. It's a, it is hit or miss. Sometimes a beer will reach its expiration date. So how do you know? Well, usually like, okay, so this one right here, this one is actually called, um, this is their quad, it's called God Complex. They actually put the wax on it because they say you could age this one 10 years. So they put the wax on it so it doesn't get any air inside. So it just keeps all the oxidation and air and stuff away from it. So it'll age really better. This one is again, two years old as well. This is bottled in 2020. But they say you could, be comfortable aging that um, 10 years. They have some that they've actually made that they say you can age 25 years. Wow. So there's no like, they don't tell you on the bottle usually the... the well, they'll the usually them. say, they'll usually say drink fresh just because they don't want any liability if, if you age it for yeah. three years and you open it and it's terrible. Some beers will say, you know, they'll, they'll put that, you know, drink now or, or age for a few years. But. Okay. Now, does anything happen if you drink expired beer or is it just well, not taste bad? When we're talking like stouts, usually they're a little more rich, a little more sweet. Um, if a stout goes bad, then it kind of gets um, peppery, like green pepper, like a bell pepper type of flavor. It's, really? It's bad. Yeah. Because it gets mm -hmm. oxidized or, you know, air gets in the bottle somehow and it just oxidizes it and it just, it just ruins the biology of it, I guess. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know if a green pepper beer would taste very good. It does not taste. It does not taste great. It kind of gets, it kind of gets sour too. It's, but you know, it's not supposed to be sour. Yeah, mm -hmm. I actually really didn't know that about beer. I honestly actually didn't even think it really expired. I thought the yeah. better with age, but yeah, that's good to know. Now, sour beers that are already sour, sour beers can age quite, quite a long time. I mean, if you go to the breweries in Belgium that invented the the style, I mean, they've got decades old beer. You can definitely yeah, like, sours and stuff. Their beer could be made of like different things. Yeah. They're sour beers, so mm -hmm. it's already got the wild bacteria and stuff from, from their brewery. And then they bottle condition it, which bottle conditioning means that it actually gets its bubbles inside the bottle. So all that yeast is still alive when they throw it in there and it eats up all the sugars. And that's what produces the, the gases and the bubbles. Interesting. Now that's with older beers, you know, the yeast will kind of die and it'll go down to the bottom and you'll see all that sediment stuff that's just like the dead yeast and... i definitely do like lighter beers now lighter like beers favorite. in color like taste. flavor taste flavor yeah but i feel like more like lighter tasting or feeling beers that were normally lighter in color right it's like the dark well, not necessarily beers. i mean you can have negro modelo which is a dark colored beer but it's still light flavor so that's the easy drinking beer yeah 
So, do you want to try the yeah. next one? Yeah, totally. Okay. We're gonna put these aside. Let these warm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. See what happens. Try the next one, which is the God Complex. It's called God Complex. It's um, also called the Decennial. It says age for up to one decade. Okay, Ten cool. Years. So yeah. sometimes it will stay on the bottle. This one they did do, they did a whole series of really big beers. They did a quad, I think a barley wine, a stout, and a Belgian blonde. So those are all kind of really big, high ABV type beers. A lot of the bigger ABV beers you can kind of store longer too. Now we gotta cut through this wax, so I'm gonna attempt to do that. An exacto knife it. Careful, don't try this yeah. again. These are gonna be kind of caramely sweet, maybe some dark fruits typically is the style. When I say dark fruits, it's like prunes, mm -hmm. raisins, dates, yeah. kind of those dark dried red fruits. That's kind of why we went with the grapes too, because raisins would probably be best, but grapes will kind of add like a fresher experience with the dense cheeses. Yeah, we may already get notes of grape in this, or uh, raisins. Yeah. We'll see, yeah. we'll see what this has in store for us. So as far as like this beer, within like this realm of this type of beer, what would you rate this out of the ones that you've tried? Is this the Saison? Mm -hmm. Oh, that one would be up there for me. Really? Honestly. Mm -hmm. So this being a clean Saison, I'm gonna compare it to other clean Saisons. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I'd probably give it about a seven. Seven? Yeah, that's seven, not bad. Maybe an eight. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Good. I would rate it, but I don't think I've tried that many like saisons to be able to have like the experience. But honestly, <laughs> like out of the light beers that I've tasted, I'd probably rate that. Honestly, probably about a seven too. I know it's, you know, not out of the scope of saisons, but just the light beers that I've tried in general. I think that's pretty up there for sure. Sure. So this one, I mean, already, I mean, color. Ooh. We kind of look at color first. So what are we seeing? We're seeing kind of... Kind of like reddish. Burgundy, maybe? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. It's very red. It's like poison apple color. It yeah, smells a little sweet. richer, definitely. Yeah. Definitely like dark fruits. It, it kind of almost good. smells like sweet. So they're going to be on the kind of the sweeter side. And what's the uh, ABV? Is so the ABV one? on this one, so ABV is the alcohol per, uh, per like volume. This one is 16%. So, I mean, this okay. is more alcohol than a bottle, than, than wine. Okay. Wines are usually 13, 14. And this one, what was that? 9.9. 9.9? So that one's yeah. a little more then. This one's a little bit more. Okay. Quads are usually around 10 or 11, mm -hmm. typically. So this one is even a little bit more than a typical quad. Wow. The North doesn't joke around. They don't joke around. Cheers. Pink. Ooh, yeah, that one's smooth. It's That's smooth. very smooth. It is sweet. I'm getting, I almost want to think like a hard butterscotch candy. Yeah. Were there's original mm -hmm. kind of those flavors? Yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah, this one kind of almost feels like caramel too. Mm -hmm. Like the thickness of it, like it feels thicker. Yeah. Which is kind of weird to say because it's the well, same type of like liquid. Well, yes but. and no. I mean, you can get some stouts that are going to be like really thick or viscous and they're those and does sometimes have a better what they call mouthfeel. It's not very refreshing. <laughs> yeah. No, this and you know, this really is more like you want to have this maybe like an app as, as an after dinner beer. Kind of like a dessert beer. Yeah. It's definitely not as dark, I would say, as like the stouts that I've tried, but it's kind of like in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost. If you switch this around, you can always, you know, like wine, you can almost see what it's got any kind of lacing. What is lacing? So lacing is you can actually see the residual of the alcohol. Get stuck to the glass. Mm. You're not gonna see it on that one, I doubt. Well, nine point nine percent, like kind of maybe you can, but oh, you can kind of. Is that you it? Can see lacing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah, so with like higher ABVs, then it might lace more. It will lace more. Okay. Now we can tell carbonation on this is not nearly as much as it was with. With the saison. Which explains like kind of a thicker feel then. Because I guess that makes sense. Yeah, with like carbonation, it's gonna like feel a little more lighter and airy. Yeah. Now, which cheese do you think would go better with this? The caramel um, cheese or actually go at opposite end of the spectrum and go with the salty? I can see how both of those could fit in with this beer. I feel like if you're trying to complement it and trying to like get Compliment. flavors out of it, it would be the caramel cheese. But if you're trying to kind of combat it, and like kind of combat the sweetness with some salty, then definitely the other cheese for sure. I say we try the caramel cheese. All right. Let's see. Well, I'll get one for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Yeah, that really brings out the caramel notes though. One thing that I like about this cheese is it kind of like, it like it's kind of sticky. Yeah, kind of sticks to the top of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Hello? 
Mm-mm. That's good beer. I wasn't tasting too much of the caramel before, but when I had yeah. the cheese, of course that cheese already tastes like caramel, but it kind of brought it out a little more. Yeah. Now, this doesn't say what barrel it was aged in, but it's definitely barrel aged. So, thank you. When it's like barrel aged, obviously it can like kind of pick up some of those woody notes. When it's in a glass though, it's not gonna like pick up any of those notes. So as it ages, how does it get like deeper and flavored? Does it just kind of like ferment in itself? You know, like when we were talking about how like it well, sit over time. Well, the yeast and, and sugars will will still work its magic. The longer it sits, the longer they kind of have to like, yeah, ferment. Mm -hmm. And I mean, sometimes they'll, they'll barrel aged beers um, I've had some stouts that were sitting in a barrel for three years before they even put it into a bottle. And then they'll let it sit in the bottle for a couple months before they release it to the general public. Nice. Yeah. These are both beers that I feel like I would still drink on like a nice summer day. This one's definitely more like an apple picking type yeah, of beer. Yeah, I think but, so. But yeah. like this one I still feel like could be good, you know, kind of when you're wanting a little richer of a beer, but don't want something too rich. Yeah, it's not going to be as rich as like some stouts get and stuff. Yeah. Is this one also better like room temperature? Oh, for sure. And so why did I decide to put it into uh, this type of glass? What is this type of glass called? Um. Oh gosh, you've told me so many times. It's on the tip of my tongue. Well, this glass is called a snifter. A snifter. That's Why is right. it called a snifter? Because it like, doesn't it kind of keep the flavor inside? The aroma. So typically when you, when you drink it, you can get that. Yeah, you kind of have to like. Well, you don't have to, but keeps the aroma in there. So when you do drink it, you too. get some more of that flavor. Yeah, well, just like wine, there's a couple things you want to do. You want to smell it, which is would be the nose of the beer the way it smells, obviously the taste, but then also the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is gonna be different with this one than with that one. Yeah. It's funny yeah, because good. I love the smell of this. I like raisins. I don't like mm -hmm. dates and I don't like prunes though. Really? Now, it may smell like it, may taste like dark fruits, but it doesn't actually have any prunes or really? dates or anything in it. How the flavors, do they get that flavor in it? Well, so with this color, you know, but don't quote me on this. I don't know for sure. I don't know the exact science, but mm -hmm. I mean, I do know that they probably use more of a roasted barley. So it's more roasted when they actually start the process. That's why you get the darker colors. And then, I mean, it could be the hops are gonna give some flavor. It's not gonna have the hop flavor, but those hops are still going to have those resins and stuff that, that leak out into the beer. It could just be the process of, of how long they boil it and all that stuff. That is so interesting. Cause I, I would never have guessed that they don't actually put the fruits in the barrel or like in the beer right. itself. Right, and, and that's why we call it, it's got notes of dark fruits or, or like yeah. stone fruits and stuff. Just, it just picks up those. Those notes, those aromas, those notes. flavors. Cleaner saisons, they might have notes of like banana, coriander, or some of those yeah. spices. But not necessarily, they don't throw a banana in that saison. The other beer that we tried that was from on Corporate Ladder. Right. Well, they, ice cream, they like I'm sure they put actually, the banana in there. They threw milk and everything else in there. So yeah. Um, I'm sure that actually did have banana physically in it. Interesting. But that's really cool. Think about it. That actually tasted like banana. Yeah. It didn't just have notes of banana. It wasn't that summer. was like the flavor. Like that was yeah. the same thing. Like that one beer that I tried in my last video. I actually did another um, beer tasting video and I tasted stouts. She did. Um, yeah. she'll, she'll put the link right up there. Yeah, right, right here. The link will be right there. You had explained that one of them was oh. in a whiskey bear. Yeah. So or actually, I still have that beer. Hold on one second, I'll go get it. Okay. So this is from Cerebral, yeah. and this was actually, so this is a, a barrel-aged stout, and it says it was aged 28 to 30 months in 18-year-old George T. Stagg and 14-year old Fitzgerald bourbon barrels. Oh. So they took the base beer, put part of it in a George T. Stagg barrel and another part of it in an old Fitzgerald bourbon barrel. And then mixed it? And then they mixed those two together. I guess I didn't know that that would also be part of a beer process too. Like aging separate parts of the beer in different barrels and then mixing them. Just from my knowledge and yeah. what I've gained out of this thing is they, they kind of taste that, that base of beer and it's like what would go really good. Like add on to it? Mm -hmm. So what Cerebral did is they took their base beer, they just bottled it without anything in it, and then they did, they threw some coconut in some, and then they threw some vanilla in another. So then they have different variants of the same beer. That's what we did, yeah. as I let you guys taste the uh, the base beer, the vanilla, and the coconut. That's cool. I want to try it with... Um, oh, we got to try it with this cheese. cheese. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's try it with this cheese here. So I liked it really well with, with that one. Mm -hmm. 
that brought out more of like the caramely notes in it, mm-hmm. which is actually really interesting because I didn't really get a whole lot of like the caramel before. I just got like the caramel and like the texture, but I did get a little more of like the caramely notes. Now, when we say caramel, it's not like are we getting like, caramel or are we getting butterscotch? Oh yeah, that mm-hmm. might actually make more sense. But yeah. when I say butterscotch, I'm thinking where there's original that hard butterscotch candy mm-hmm. probably resembles that just a little bit more. Maybe than caramel. It's hard. I mean, they're they're very 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 close. Mm-hmm. And again, we're just getting notes of it. So we don't we don't know. We have to decide that for ourselves. Yeah. And it's gonna differ from your palate. I mean I could totally be getting something different than you're getting. That's actually very true. For me personally, if I wanted to go more darker, sweeter, and richer, I'd probably get something like this. Which is the it's the quad. The, the quad. quadruple. Quadruple. Honestly, this is probably a gateway beer for me into the darker stuff. Yeah, into the, yeah, it's kind of like a transition. It's a good transition beer. Mm-hmm. So what would you rate this one then? Within your like scope of, I guess quads. I've had, had quads. Had quite I've, had, I've had quite a few quads. Um, I mean, I'd probably get about an 8.5, 8. somewhere there. Okay, yeah. I know it's River North, some of them. I mean, even the 2013 that I have, just it's got so much barrel character. Mm-hmm. I'm getting some, but not, not as much as River North has done before. Yeah. Do you think there's more like flavors or styles with beer than there's wine? I've oh, that's a good question. I would probably say yes. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Totally see, good. my palate isn't isn't fine tuned for wine. Yeah. I mean, you're not seeing any wineries throw a bunch of ice cream and banana and yeah. all this all this stuff. True. Or what they call adjuncts in into wine. That's banana wine. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard of that. It, yeah. could, it could be out there, I don't know. So I would, I would say so. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't know. ask you what you would rate this. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. I don't know no, if you've ever I had a quad. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had any other quads. This might actually be my first time having a quad, so I can't really speak from like experience as far as like quads. Honestly, if, if I were to rate it in the scope of darker beers with where my taste buds kind of sit right now, I might actually rate it like a nine. It's a little lighter than some of the darker beers. Like I said, I've never had a quad before, so I it's can't not, really it's not, speak It's not a popular style. That. I wish it yeah. was more popular and more breweries did this. But a lot of American breweries, they they go for the for the stouts. Barley wine is, is pretty popular. Barley wine is going to be very similar in color, feel, and flavor as a quad. They're going to be very similar. So then why is it called barley wine? If you it's know, a beer... Well, beer is brewed with barley. I don't and I don't know the brewing process or the science behind it, but I just assume that maybe it's the same type of, of process, but obviously yeah. instead of grapes, it's barley. Yeah. What would you say is like your favorite cheese so far? Well, place? I still prefer this. I think I like a, a savory cheese over a sweet cheese. I can definitely see that. So. I'm gonna try this one now. Now that it's like kind of warm. Oh yeah, let's try this one. Yes. See if it kind of tastes or smells with me. Still getting the raspberry jam. I'm still getting the raspberry too. I feel like the raspberry is more at the forefront now though. It's a little more dry too. It is. That's a good way to describe it. I actually didn't think of it as dry. I was just going to say that it was like well, not as like fruity, I guess. The raspberry flavor almost tastes richer, but I wouldn't have thought of like drier. When you say that, it definitely makes sense. Yeah, more dry. dry. Yeah. I tell people I like warm old beer. Old yeah. warm beer. Which kind of sounds gross, <laughs> it does. but like honestly, it does. Warm beer, it makes sense. It does. I, li- I like cold coffee and warm beer. <laughs> that is the, that's the, the best the best combos there for sure yeah. that you um you had you you and like with this too i don't know I don't quads know. quads i usually like warmer yeah like at room temperature I mean. definitely gets richer with temperature though more f- i think sure. it's more flavor you actually mm-hmm. get more flavor yeah i'm not too experienced with like alcohol in general but i'm getting more of like a deeper is it kind of like bourbon flavor I mean, kind of the, the most yeah. common barrels that they probably put these in um are probably whiskey or Really? Okay. They could also just throw it into a, a brand new barrel as well. So you mm. just begin some charred oak. Yeah, it's definitely a good sipper and, and kind of yeah. relaxer. It's Sip, more... relax, and drink responsibly. That's right. <laughs> I think out of these two, I, I do think the lighter one might still be a favorite. I don't blame favorite. you at all. I mean, if these two were sitting on my shelf, which they were at one time, it would depend. But I would probably go for a quad. Yeah. Over all righty cool well do you have anything else you'd like to say um i guess out there drink local experiment um try different styles that's uh it's not what you usually get to and just uh see what you like 
Yeah, well, this was really good. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. I always love enjoying uh, drinking a beer with my daughter. Yeah, so. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on and teaching us some new things. Definitely learned some new vocabulary and some other facts that I did not know about yeah. beer before. And you've been teaching me a lot about beer already. Okay. So There's a lot of different flavors out there. It's kind of hard to get bored of. It is hard to get bored of. Um, you know, kind of ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll go through a really good sour phase and then I'll go into the more malty stuff. Yeah. And I feel like it's something too that they're always experimenting with. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed and you guys would like us to try some other types of beers in the future, definitely please feel free to let us know. If you've ever had a quad, I know it's not a popular style, but if you have and there's a particular brand or a quad you like, let me know. I I'd love to try it if I haven't already. And if you guys have any questions or comments as well, or any questions for him that you would like to know about beer, he can definitely look and answer, you know, what he knows and everything. And if I can't answer, I'll, I'm sure I know somebody who, who will know the answer. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, yeah, thank you guys all for watching and hanging out with us for a bit. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we hope to do this again. I hope to um, do this again. This is, fun. this is so much fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Please leave a like, leave a comment, maybe a little subscribe if you guys would like to, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Cool. Yeah. That was fun. These are really fun. good.